empty nesting. We watch our children as toddlers arriving into the world with a clenched fist and a loud cry. We later watch them learning to crawl. In some days later, they try to take their first baby steps. A year later, we see them running around the house and we have to guard them from hurting themselves. Then someday we painfully see our children packing their bags as mature adults and gone, never to be toddlers again. All the journey to parenting ends into an empty nest. We nearly spend a half our lifetime preparing and sacrificing for people who will later leave us at 18. In the blink of an eye, you'll be hugging your children goodbye and returning to an empty house. Someday, you'll mourn not that he has gone forever, but you'll cry for the end of an era, a precious time of your children's time gone by. You'll miss the time when they were young and their voices rang in the halls of your home. What we call true parenting is a journey to emptying our nest. We gradually lose the grip and let the children be independent adults with wings to fly on their own. For several years, I watched my brothers empty the nest of my parents' home, and years later, it was my turn to leave. It was kinda emotional for mom, but she had to let me go and be a man. I look back several years later and glean a lesson. If boys never leave their mom's laps, they will never be men. Empty nesting refers to a phrase in parents' life when their children have grown up and moved out of the family home to pursue their own lives, leaving the parents with an empty nest. Empty nesting often triggers a range of emotions for parents, including sadness, loneliness, pride, and relief. It's normal for parents to experience a sense of loss as they navigate the absence of their children in the household, sharing experiences, feelings with others who are going through similar life challenges can be comforting and helpful. In the quiet of the morning light, you wander through the rooms once filled with delight. Echoes of laughter, now faint and far memories linger like a distant star. Gone are the days of chaos and noise, of toys scattered around, of boys and girls. The nest now empty, devoid of sound, yet its stillness, solace is found. For though their halls may seem lonely and bare, there is a chance to see your grandchildren come home. No more rushing, no more constant demands, just the gentle whisper of time's steady hand. Each room holds echoes of years gone by, of bedtimes and lullabies. But now they stand silent, a canvas of space, ready to be filled with a new kind of grace. For as the children spread, spread their wings and fly, they leave behind a legacy, reaching for the skies. And though the nest may feel empty and cold, it's filled with love that will never grow old. So let us embrace this season of change when it comes to us. For though the nest may be empty today, it is filled with the promise of endless tomorrows that grandchildren will come and give you company. Some of the jobs that took our attention in time will look insignificant when our children reach the moment of leaving home. We will have two feelings at that moment. The one that says I am glad I spent time with my kids or a feeling that says I wish I'd spent time with them. Scriptures teach us to make the most of our time because the days are evil. There will never be extra time to parent. We only have this one to make a difference. A father asked me the other day saying, what should I do with my kids who are already grown and left home? I was a busy man and never had all these teachings. I looked in his eyes and I could see that he was genuine. He had lost much time of his children's time. There then I felt a need to keep so close to my girls. I often closed my bed, bedroom door when I was too tired to stop them. But this time I chose to leave it open so they can come in anytime and disturb me as much as they wanted because I realized I did not have much time with them. 
that only time I dropped them myself at school and I knew that that could be the only bond I have with them. The weekend Bible stories we share, the night of watching their performances in art and dance in our living room may be the only one I have got. The emptiness will soon come to all of us and we must be ready to meet it. It is often said that good moms and good dads graduate into good grandmoms and granddads. In your next stage of life as a grandmom, serve as a positive role model for your children's to, for your grandchildren by demonstrating kindness, integrity, resilience in your life. Show them the value of godliness, hard work, perseverance, empathy. Stay involved in your grandchildren's lives by attending events like birthdays, celebrations and milestones, but always respect their independence and autonomy. Offer support and guidance when needed, but allow them to make their own choices and decisions, even though they were once your kids. The scriptures tell us about Lois, who was a great grandmother. While the biblical background of Lois is limited, her influence as Timothy's grandmother is, insignif is significant. Her commitment to Christ and her investment in Timothy's spiritual development serve as a powerful example of the impact that grandparents can have on their faith journey of their grandchildren. Lois is mentioned in 2 Timothy 1.5 where the Apostle Paul commends Timothy for his sincere faith, noting that it was first dwelt in his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. This indicates that Lois was likely a Jewish woman who along with her daughter Eunice embraced Christianity. Lois played a significant role in shaping Timothy's faith from a young age. Her commitment to Christ and her teachings likely had a profound impact on Timothy's spiritual development. She passed down the traditions and the teachings of the Jewish faith as well as the new Christian beliefs to her grandson. Lois's faithfulness in nurturing Timothy's spiritual growth demonstrates the importance of intergeneration faith transmission. Her influence underscores the significance of family in the transmission of our faith and practices to the next generation. Paul commends Timothy for his genuine faith, which he attributes to the spiritual heritage passed down from his grandmother and mother. The example of Grandmother Lois serves as an encouragement for believers who invest in the spiritual growth of the young generation within their families. It emphasizes the importance of mentoring, teaching, and modeling a life of faith for future generations. You will empty your nest someday. Will you leave a legacy of good grandparenting? Thank you for listening. Patrick, Living Work Community, God bless you.